Good day and how are you doing? It is Al here on Al's Geek Lab. I hope you're well. It is absolutely disgusting outside and I mean disgusting. The weather, I'm not even going to show you because if, if you were to see the weather, you would be depressed. So I thought, what can I do that would make sense on a, a disgusting Sunday like this? And I mean disgusting. Um, <laughs> what I will do is I will make a video on Al's Geek Lab, of course. And um, I've had a look out um, on, uh, on on a few things that I can do on a short term or short form video. And today I thought I would show you one of my favourite things, MTCP, but not just any normal MTCP because I've talked about MTCP in a couple of videos on this channel already. I'm going to talk about a variation of MTCP by J.H. Pyle. So, straight into the back cave, let's have a look at what I'm talking about. So here is GitHub, and um, I'll scroll up to the top of the page here. So github.com forward slash J.H. Pyle. Um, I'm assuming that's his name. And as you can see here, um, Jonathan Pyle, there you go, see? Okay. Um, and there's also a contributor down here, Vassal Samolov. Samol, Samolov? Hopefully I'm getting that right. If not, I'm ap apologizing now. Uh, anyway, it's an unofficial fork of Michael Brutman's MTCP. So if you don't know what um, Michael Brutman's MTCP is, I can help you with that one very quickly. If you go to brutman.com forward slash MTCP, you will find this here. And um, it's basically a TCP stack, a modern TCP stack for vintage IBM type PC. So if you've got an, an IBM PC, a 5150, a PC Junior, um, or 286, a 386, any any clone machine, they'll all work. As long as it's running MS-DOS and it's got basically 128K of RAM and a, some sort of network card in it. Um, it could be a network card or it could be one of those little um, Zircon things that go through the parallel port. Whatever, it will work. It will give you TCP. And it's got a whole bunch of um, applications that will go with the TCP stack. So it's not just TCP on its own. It doesn't just give you an IP address and then goes, hey, that's it, you're stuffed. It's literally got um, DHCP to give you the IP address. It's got an FTP client. It's got an FTP server, so you can actually send files to your old machine from a, a normal, more modern machine. It's got an HT, HT get tool, which allows you to pull HT, HTTP traffic, HTML basically, from websites. Um, HTTP server, so it can actually serve out HTTP pages, so you can become a web server on something which has got 128k of RAM, which is just insane. Um, it's got an IRC client as well, which actually works very well. IRC Junior, which I've demoed on this channel um, a number of times as well. The netcat command, if you've used netcat, you'll know what that's all about. Ping, obviously, packet tool, which is a packet sniffer. SNTP, which is for getting network time protocol. Basically, for getting the time off over the internet and synchronizing it with your local machine. And of course, the one that I use all the time to get on bulletin board systems, Telnet. So that is uh, the, the, the version of Michael Brutman's MTCP that we all know and love. It's been around for quite some time now. Uh, the latest update was in uh, 2020. Although, word to the wise, you heard it here first on Al's Geek Lab. I was in touch with Mr. Brutman and uh, Michael is coming out with a new version very soon here now. So um, I'm, I'm not sure of all of the updates within that new version, but it, it will be coming out very soon. Um, my understanding is that most of the updates will be ones which are um, stability based. Um, so yeah, that's that's the main gist of what's coming along in, in the new version. So I don't think that it offers what we're going to see in this version here today. Um, so what is this fork? What does it do? Um, why would you care? That's why we're here. Well, if you have a look here, this is an unofficial fork of the Telnet application. So it's actually the whole stack. It's got all of those applications that you just saw. But the the, um, the big amendment that's in this particular version is the Telnet application. So why would you want to use this particular version over Michael Brutman's stock standard version? Well, <clears throat> for starters, it has enhanced keyboard support. Now, what is enhanced keyboard support, I hear you ask? A keyboard is a keyboard is a keyboard. Well, um, Michael Brutman developed MTCP on his PC Junior, um, so particularly um, 
cumbersome version of the IBM PC if you ever if you ever knew one. So if you know the IBM PC Junior and the original IBM PC 5150 and 5160, you'll know that they had 84 key keyboards instead of 102 key keyboards. So what you would call the standard um, Model M and of course those horrible chiclet keyboards that you had on the PC Junior. Well, um, that's the non-enhanced keyboard, um, the Model M. So the Model F, um, the Model F, sorry, the Model F, yes, the Model F keyboards, 84 keys. Um, whatever, for whatever reason, the version of MTCP doesn't have support for all the extended keys that like the, um, the page up, page down keys, the insert keys, um, and so forth. <clears throat> So when you're on a BBS, it can be quite difficult sometimes um, to, to, to use. Uh, you've got to go up and down with the cursor keys and that can take you know, quite considerably a lot longer. So for example, when I'm on a BBS, I like to surf through the, the various bits of mail and the messaging menus. And um, usually when I'm on one of these BBSs, including my own, there's quite a lot of messages to go through. And sometimes I'm not interested in you know, a whole page of messages. I want to just skip past 10 messages at a time or more and the only way I can really do that efficiently is by using the page down key. Well the Telnet command in MTCP, the stock MTCP does not support page up page down. So this supports enhanced keyboard. So I will just go back there. What else does it have? It has mouse and clipboard support. Now, that's very handy. Um, so all you have to do is uh, launch your standard um, mouse driver like a Microsoft mouse driver in the MS-DOS and then you have full mouse support within um, the Telnet client, which is great. So basically whenever I'm you know, seeing a bit of text or a URL or something like that on my old machine, move the mouse, I can select the text like I would normally and I can even copy and paste with it. So that's pretty cool. Um, and so I'm gonna give you a demo of all of this. I'm gonna show you on a real old machine what this actually looks like. Um, there is translation of incoming Unicode characters, um, which is which kind of blows my mind as well. Obviously, if you think about it, these old PCs, these old IBMs, they have no notion of UTF-8 or Unicode character sets. So if you've got, you know, emojis or, you know, apostrophes or extra characters which are using the, the more modern universal encoding Unicode uh, characters, they just look like garbage when you pull them back into an old machine. Well, this this does, um, it fixes that basically and turns them into characters that your old retro machine can actually understand. So if you get a Unicode UTF-8 apostrophe, for example, it will turn it into a, a code page 437 style apostrophe. I think that's basically what it's going to do anyway. Um, <clears throat> Then it offers, I'll, I'll come back to 6L graphics in a second, but also offers printer support as well, which means exactly that. You can print stuff directly from Telnet, Telnet which, which can be pretty handy. Um, the binary is available, as it says here, as the Telnet XA, and there's also Telnet 8 uh, XA, which is uh, for machines without the enhanced keyboard support. Um, so I've uh, had a good old test drive of this for a while, uh, probably about two weeks now I've been using BBS's um, quite the thing and um, I, I it does everything that it says it does on the tin um, and it does it pretty well I think the only gripe that I really have with it is that for some reason it's a lot slower it's a lot slower at drawing up BBS's on my old 5162 back there um, <clears throat> so ANSI comes down on the normal MDCP, ANSI comes down and it's pretty much down in a flash. Whereas ANSI's kind of draw more like they're at 57, 57, 600 BPS, 56K sort of speed um, when it's using this one. So I haven't gotten to the bottom of that. Maybe there's a quick fix that I can um, be aware of. And maybe I should just submit some feedback to uh, Jonathan uh, here to tell him that it doesn't work very quickly for some reason and why is that? Maybe he has the answer. So that's the only thing that I found using this version and it's not so slow that I would go, oh, this is a deal breaker for me. Um, the features that it offers perhaps are, you know, more advantageous to me than actually the, the lack of uh, the, the lack of speed. So really, the, the, you know, I'm not using um, an old IBM for its speed in any, case, in any case. And when I'm typing on a bulletin board, really, I'm not, not too fussed about it. But, but it is noticeable and it is a little bit irritating. So that's, that's the only thing that's bothering me. <clears throat> the last thing, which is kind of 
not about bulletin boards, but it's really, really interesting. And some bulletin boards do have 6L graphics on them, but that's by far the minority. 6L graphics. Okay, this is pretty cool. You can use 6L graphics to see images in pretty much over the terminal. So imagine going to um, your terminal and using a text mode web browser, downloading a um, an image like a JPEG or a PNG or something like that and then wanting to view it within your terminal without having to download that image and then like view it on a normal a normal modern computer you can do it with 6L. 6L basically transfers the graphics uh, the, the graphics the PNG or the or the JPEG or whatever it might be a GIF as well transfers that into text which then your terminal can understand and represent it as the graphic that you, you're supposed to see. Uh, it does adapt it slightly for your, your palette so that um, the graphics isn't quite as refined as what it would look like obviously on a full you know million color display or whatever but it uh, certainly does that does it well. That's for VGA. It also supports so this has got built-in support for CGA 2 color, CGA 4 color and Hercules monochrome uh, modes. So the CGA two color mode, I can't remember off the top of my hat what the um, the resolution is off that, but it was the higher of the two resolutions that were in CGA or the many resolutions that were in CGA. So you get a black and white uh, display of images, a bitmap images on your terminal in CGA or Hercules Monochrome as well, which is I think is a 7, 700 or 720 by 400 and something resolutions so are quite high resolution in Hercules. So it does that. It, it actually allows you to view images right within the terminal. So here's a Wikipedia article on 6L graphics. And so you can see an example of what, you know, this imagine a JPEG being transferred into something like this. It's a bunch of escape sequences. So basically, if, if you were to um, cat that file there, obviously it looks like garbage to you and I, but if you were to cat it, i.e. to show that file, that text file, it would come up with this little high, which is obviously a bitmap type graphics. And that's right on a Unix terminal. So you can start to think about where this is um, going to become useful. It's when you're telnetting, not to a bulletin board or anything like that, but certainly telnetting to a, uh, a Linux box or a Raspberry Pi or something like that. So that's exactly how I have set it up here. So you can see here, uh, somebody has the example of um, catting a, a file, a, um, a 6L, it's already in 6L format, but here the, the Wikipedia logo at, directly at a Unix prompt. So I'm gonna show you that as well, all on a, uh, a 1980s vintage computer. Uh, in real life just to give you an idea of how that all works. So it's pretty cool. Um, I think this is a really wonderful contribution and um, certainly Michael Brookman certainly seems to have given it his blessing as well. Would be great to see the page up, page down. Um, I mean, that was really, for me, I think that was the, the killer feature of this. Um, the fact that I can use more keys on the keyboard and also that copy and paste is pretty handy as well on occasion. Um, those, those would be great if they were merged back into the official MTCP, but as it is, the fact that this exists at all is just wonderful. So without further ado, I'm gonna give you an example of this version of MTCP. So apologies for the sound quality, it's a rather crummy camera, and it's also an even uh, worse sound because I'm in the corner of this room where this big fan is on this old machine. But if I didn't show you this on the real machine, on the real McCoy, then it couldn't, it really wouldn't be, wouldn't be the real thing, would it? So I guess you're just going to have to bear with me on that regard. So let's first of all um, turn it into a BBS, and of course, there's no better BBS than Al's Geek Lab, right? And um, the first thing that the BBS asks of you is what encoding you would like to receive. Now, that's actually quite a good um, exercise because the usual encoding that we would use is ANSI, which is code page 437. That's the built-in code page uh, or text of the IBM PC. The IBM PC has absolutely no understanding of what the modern UTF-8 standard is, which is basically the Unicode standard, the, the standard which allows all different characters from all different languages 
uh, to be allowed to be displayed on every single screen in the world. But basically this computer here, this old XT, has no idea about UTF-8. So when I expect to press UTF-8, it would show me garbage. And in fact, when I use Michael Brookman's MTCP, that is the case, it shows me garbage. But as you can see right now, there's perfectly good ANSI coming on the screen perfectly legible, I can read the text, the graphics are all shown perfectly fine. So that goes to show that um, it is interpreting characters which are potentially UTF-8 at Unicode and then translating them into code page 437. And the weird thing that I've found so far, maybe this is me going wrong, is that I'm actually unable to use code page 437. I'm only able to use UTF-8. So I don't know quite why that is, but maybe that's, I think that's probably me going wrong there. But here I am on Al's Geek Lab BBS, and I'll just log in. There we go. And as you can see, the text sort of scrolling down the screen, it's uh, definitely slower than what it usually was on um, on the old um, Michael Brookman stock standard MTCP. So that's the, you know, you can see there's a definite lag there. That lag, um, this would all just go and would appear on the screen without any of that lag. So uh, there's a definite difference in that there. Um, I won't choose to read any of my emails, I'll just get straight into it. A few messages waiting for me as well. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to just show you the, the, the enhanced keyboard um, option, which is, you know, fairly uh, self-explanatory. Um, so if I go into the index message reader, you can see that um, if this was on a standard keyboard, I'd have to go down these items one by one, you know, just pressing the down arrow or the up arrow. But thankfully, with this version of MTCP, I can press the page down key and of course I can go down a page at a time whenever that is supported. And so in fact, here I am in the message reader and again I would usually have had to go down all of these messages one at a time. Now I can just press the page down and I can see all the messages at a page at a time. So that in itself is a great help. Okay, so um, obviously I want to use my Microsoft mouse. Um, real old school one. This is going into the COM port on the machine. So I'll just use um, the cute mouse driver. Just load that up and I'll go back into the VBS. And you can see that this version here has got an October 2021 version date which is obviously more modern than the version by Michael Brookman at the moment which was March 2020. So that's one way to distinguish the fact that it's a uh, newer version of MTCP. All right, so um, I'm just going to show you the fact that it supports uh, copy and paste. So as soon as I move my mouse here, um, I get a mouse cursor on the screen and I can actually drag that mouse cursor all over the place as well, which is really cool. So if I go into the um, chat menu, So I thought it might be a little bit easier to see with the lights off just because of these CRT monitors. So I've changed the, uh, changed the setup, hopefully that's easier, um, really winging it. But anyway, now as you can see I've got the mouse driver loaded and uh, you can see that when I move the mouse about, um, my trusty little Microsoft serial mouse, um, that you see a cursor on the screen. <clears throat> so let's just go into messaging. So search for messages from, to me. And then there's a few in uh, the local messages and then two in the retro computing area. So I'm going to go and read those ones in the retro computing area. So I'll go to the next space. Here we go. So it's a, a topic on barbed wire tele telephony. But if I wanted to say another, you know, take this text here, maybe 
Um, I don't know, down there. Lost him again. It's crashed on me again! Okay, so it it's crashed. <laughs> That's the second time it's crashed on this video. I don't know why it's crashing all of a sudden. It wasn't crashing before. So, really wasn't a great demo of uh, me using the mouse. For some reason, I tried it three times, but every single time I tried to use the mouse, this time, uh, the machine locked up. Uh, which has not happened to me before, I have been successful in, in, utilis in utilising it, but you all know what copy and paste looks like, and so perhaps there's a bug in the software, or perhaps there's just uh, something that my machine's not doing today because, well, it feels like the weather outside, which is tragic. So, regardless, let's just move on. <laughs> let's just say that your mileage may vary with uh, mouse actions. Um, so now, what I'm going to do is move on to 6L graphics. Um, and so, I will log into my Raspberry Pi, which is just a normal uh, Linux box, obviously on a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and what we can do is we can use the Lynx um, web browser. <clears throat> so if you've never used Lynx web browser, it's just a text mode web browser. Tux the penguin. My favourite Linux image. Alright, so down here, um, obviously, we have the results from Google Images. So let's, uh, let's go to this particular one here, which is um, Tux from Wikipedia. These image uh, links are very long. Uh, I don't know why links particularly does it like this, but whatever. Um, if we click on that, or hit return on that, <clears throat> there you go, we got a picture of Tux. Now obviously I'm using it in CGA mode, um, so I'm getting it in the horrible four color CGA mode, um, but if I had a VGA display, uh, it would be a, a lot nicer. But the fact is, what I'm doing there, some, obviously some images like that one render a lot better than others, but the fact that the matter is that I can view images, um, that one's terrible, um, <clears throat> but I can view images right here on the command line inside uh, an ancient machine like this at all is, is very, very cool. Um, it also comes with a tool called Show. So if I uh, have a look here, I think I, uh, I think I might have put a PNG file in here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if I, there's a command called Show that it's just basically a script that came that came packaged with this version of MTCP. Uh, so if I do Show Tux PNG, again, it's just an image show, uh, viewer for this version of. MTCP and so I can get a full screen image. So you can download images off the net and view them full screen. And of course, if this was a VGA display rather than an EGA, which is what this is, it doesn't support EGA 16 colors. I've, uh, I've asked for that to be a, uh, um, an update to the, uh, to the package because it would be really cool to see this in 16 colors rather than the, the garish uh, CGA uh, cyan magenta colors, which uh, you can see in front of you. But um, there you go, you can view any JPEG, any PNG, any GIF image, and it uh, will display it on your screen. So that's, that's pretty cool, I, I like that a lot. Um, so, so that's 6L graphics, um, and uh, you know, you, the conversion that it does from the PNG file to the 6L file is, is like a, it's basically a text file which you can look at, which has just got escape sequences and numbers in. So that's pretty cool. So there are a few enhancements, um, and I obviously I would say that um, whilst these enhancements are fantastic, the only problem is the performance of the Telnet client itself is definitely noticeably slower. Um, the UTF mode is a bit quirky, as in I can't seem to make uh, CP437, the code page 437 ANSI work. It has to be UTF-8. I don't know if that's a problem or not, but it just seems to be that way. Maybe that's me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. And then finally, for some reason, as you've just seen, the mouse is not working. But other than that, it's um, it's great. It really is an enhancement to the um, the original code base. So um, yeah, that's that's the uh, the fork of MTCP.